North Korea says it tested strategic long-range cruise missile. North Korea says it has carried out a series of successful tests of a new long-range cruise missile over the weekend, as the country continues to expand its military capabilities amid stalled nuclear talks with the United States. The Korean Central News Agency said on Monday the cruise missiles, which had been under development for two years, successfully hit targets 1,500 kilometers, 930 miles, away on Saturday and Sunday before falling into North Korean territorial waters. The North hailed the missiles as a strategic weapon of great significance that meets leader Kim Jong-un's call to strengthen the country's military might. Pyongyang's last known missile test was in March when it launched a new tactical short-range ballistic missile. It also conducted a cruise missile test just hours after U.S. President Joe Biden took office in late January. This would be the first cruise missile in North Korea to be explicitly designated a strategic role, said Unkit Panda a senior fellow at the U.S.-based Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. This is a common euphemism for nuclear-capable system. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Kitsune Bokato told reporters Tokyo was concerned over reports of the test and that it would work closely with the U.S. and South Korea to monitor the situation. The U.S. Indo-Pacific Command said in a statement the test highlights North Korea's continuing focus on developing its military program and the threats that poses to its neighbors and the international community. It stressed that U.S. commitment to the defense of South Korea and Japan was ironclad. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, JCS, said an in-depth analysis was underway in close cooperation with U.S. intelligence but declined to confirm details, Yonhap News Agency reported. The test is the latest sign of how North Korea has continued to expand its weapons capability since talks with the U.S. to dismantle its nuclear and ballistic missile program stalled in 2019. United Nations sanctions ban it from using ballistic missile technology, although not cruise missiles, which fly at a lower altitude over shorter distances, Radong Sun Mun, the ruling Workers' Party's official newspaper ran photos of the new long-range cruise missile in the air and being fired from a transporter erector launcher. The missile is a strategic weapon that has been developed over the past two years and a key element of a five-year plan outlined in January to advance defense. Science and Arsenals, KCNA said. Detailed tests of missile parts, scores of engine ground thrust tests, various flight tests, control and guidance tests. Warhead power tests etc. were conducted with success, it said, describing the test as provocative. Leif Eric Easley, associate professor of international studies at Yale Women's University in Seoul, said the implication was that Pyongyang planned to miniaturize nuclear warheads to fit on the missiles. If that is the case, then the test is deserving of an international effort to strengthen sanctions, Easley said. The test announcement comes just a day before chief nuclear negotiators from the U.S., South Korea and Japan meet in Tokyo to explore ways to break the deadlock with North Korea. That meeting was to focus on creative ways of diplomatically engaging Pyongyang. Easily noted in emailed comments. But now a trilateral statement is needed that mentions sanctions and defense cooperation while calling on North Korea to practice military restraint, resume dialogue. and accept humanitarian assistance for alleviating the suffering of its people. North Korean leader Kim did not appear to have attended the test, with KCNA saying Pak Jong Chan, a member of the Workers' Party's powerful Politburo and a secretary of its Central Committee, oversaw it. Biden's administration has said it is open to using diplomatic channels to achieve North Korea's denuclearization but has shown no willingness to ease sanctions. China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, is also scheduled to visit Seoul on Tuesday for talks with his counterpart, Chung Ye Yui Yong. But has shown no willingness to ease sanctions. China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, is also scheduled to visit Seoul on Tuesday for talks with his counterpart, Chung Ye Yui Yong.